So I had my doubts about using a virtual desktop, but it is absolutely fantastic for turning your Quest into the best headset on the market. Together with an $80 router dedicated for Quest gaming and a Wi-Fi connection to my PC, I'm able to play PC VR games with no noticeable lag or difference in visual quality when compared to the Link. And believe me, I tested it several times. If you don't know what it is, Virtual Desktop is an application that connects your PC to the Quest, allowing you to control your PC in VR and even play PC VR games on the Quest wirelessly. Setting up Virtual Desktop can seem daunting, even if you're fairly tech savvy like myself. In this video, we're going to look at very simply at how to use Virtual Desktop, even if you have no technical knowledge whatsoever. I will show you how to get a perfect wireless PC VR connection to play even the most demanding games, including Half-Life Alex, the beefiest and most demanding PC VR game. This will turn your Oculus Quest into the best head Headset on the market hands down and the only headset I will recommend regardless of your gaming experience. First off, you need to purchase Virtual Desk Desktop for the Quest. Don't buy it on Steam, and don't buy it for the Rift. Buy it for the Oculus Quest, either through the headset or using your Oculus Quest app. Next, you need to sideload an update to Virtual Desktop that's only available through SideQuest. I will link to a great video that explains how to use SideQuest if you've never done it before. All you need is any computer and a cable to connect your headset to the computer. I used a phone charging cable. If you're already familiar with SideQuest, just look up Virtual Desktop in SideQuest, click on it, and click Install to Headset. You will know that you have done it right because Virtual Desktop, when you open it, will say Side Loaded at the bottom left side of the screen in the app on your headset. This step is required because Oculus does not want Virtual Desktop to have the ability to stream VR games, and so Virtual Desktop uses SideQuest to give us access to this feature. Next, you need to install and set up the Virtual Desktop Streamer app from their website. Once you have it downloaded, type in your Oculus username as this is how the app will find your headset. As for the preferred codec, I use Automatic, but there are two other options you can try if you aren't getting the results you want. As for the other settings, I have all the boxes checked except for Lock Computer on Disconnect. Some other applications that you'll want to install will depend on the type of games you plan on playing. If you have Steam games, download Steam and Steam VR. To download Steam VR, simply look up Steam VR in the Steam Application Store's search bar, and then select Play Game. This will install Steam VR onto your PC. If you want to play Oculus games on your PC, you will need to install the Oculus Computer app and Revive. Revive is a simple application that requires no setup, but allows your games to be visible in Steam VR. Without this, you would not be able to play Oculus apps because Oculus won't let you open apps if you don't if it doesn't detect a headset connected to your PC. There is no setup required, just install Revive and you're good to go. Now we get to the complicated stuff. The stuff that confuses most people even if you understand a little bit of tech. For virtual desktop to work, you need a 5 GHz Wi-Fi connection and a direct line of sight to the router producing the 5 GHz channel. This is because 5 GHz Wi-Fi does not travel through walls very easily. Because of this, you want the router as close as possible to the headset. You also want to make sure that your PC is connected to the router via an Ethernet cable for the best results. If you're like me though, this setup that I just explained won't work. My Wi-Fi router is in my kitchen, and there's no way to set up the router in my office where I like to do VR. This makes it impossible to have a direct line of sight from my Quest to the router I currently have. This also prevents me from connecting my PC directly to the internet via Ethernet cable without drilling holes into my wall, which I can't do in my apartment. Also, my internet service provider is only capable of providing me with speeds of 40 megabytes per second, which translates to about 25 megabytes per second in practice. This is not nearly enough for me to use Wi-Fi for VR gaming, especially while other people are using it. One solution to this is to create a Wi-Fi hotspot on your PC that your Quest connects to. This is only possible if you have a Wi-Fi card on your PC. If you don't know if you have a Wi-Fi card, here's how you can know. If you're using a laptop, you have a Wi-Fi card. 
if you connect your PC to the internet via Wi-Fi, then you have a Wi-Fi card. It's literally that simple. If the only way you connect to the internet is through an Ethernet cable and you cannot connect to the internet through Wi-Fi, then you probably don't have a Wi-Fi card. You will need to get a Wi-Fi card to create a hotspot in this case. Once you have the Wi-Fi card, go ahead and create a hotspot on your PC. To do this, make sure you're connected to a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi channel at your house. Then search for mobile hotspot on your PC to open up the mobile hotspot settings. Turn it on and make sure it says that you're tra transmitting a 5 gigahertz network. Connect your Quest to the hotspot and you're good to go. This works if you already own a PC with a Wi-Fi card and don't want to drop any extra money. The only problem is that not all Wi-Fi cards can do this and most likely your Wi-Fi card does not transmit data fast enough for virtual desktop to work well. I got it to work for me but I did notice lag and a reduction in visual quality when compared to using Oculus Link. If you want to save money and sacrifice some of the experience for wireless gameplay, this works fantastically. I, however, wanted the best possible gaming experience, especially for Half-Life Alex. I not only wanted it wirelessly, but I wanted to experience the best graphics that Half-Life Alex is known for with as little lag as possible. So let's talk about my setup. For my setup, you will need the following things. One, a Wi-Fi 6 router. Wi-Fi 6 is the next generation of Wi-Fi capable of faster speeds than ever before. These data transmission speeds will be essential to a flawless virtual desktop experience. A non-Wi-Fi 6 router will work, but not all other non-Wi-Fi 6 routers will work. To ensure that you get a router that absolutely 100% will be fast enough, just get the cheapest Wi-Fi 6 router available. I will have a link below to the one that I'm using that I got for about $80. A Cat6 Ethernet cable is also required. If you use an Ethernet cable with slow data speeds, this will be the bottleneck that ruins your experience. So just to be safe, I got a Cat6 Ethernet cable to ensure fast transmis transmission speeds from my PC to the router. You will also need a room big enough for your gaming PC and a space to play VR so that your headset stays close to the router connected to your PC. And then obviously you will need a gaming PC with a Wi-Fi card that can connect to your normal Wi-Fi and Ethernet port. I'll explain why in just a minute. Once you have everything, let's get it all set up. Turn your router on and plug it into your PC using the Cat6 Ethernet cable. Plug one end into the Ethernet port on your PC and the other end into one of the LAN LAN ports on your router. The router I got automatically created the networks, but you can open up any browser and follow the instructions that came with your router to set up the network name and password that's easier to remember. At this point, your PC should be connected to two different networks, your normal internet service providers network, where you normally get your internet from, your, your Wi-Fi. This should be connected through your Wi-Fi card and you should be connected to the new dedicated router via the ethernet cable. Your new router has no access to the internet and that is okay. This router is creating a network that will be dedicated to connecting your PC to the Quest. Connect your Quest to the router through the five gigahertz channel that your new router is producing. Now, you might be asking yourself, how will I play online games if my Quest is connected to the network that has no internet connection? Simply put, this is why we have your PC connected to two networks. Since PC VR games are running on your PC, you don't actually need an internet connection on your Quest headset to play online PC VR games. You only need an internet connection on your computer. As long as your computer is connected to the two networks, your regular internet via Wi-Fi and your new router via the ethernet, you will be good to go and will be able to play all online games just fine. This setup is the best way to ensure a good connection between your headset and the computer. As stated before, other routers and cables will work, but if you don't already have a decent router lying around, save yourself some frustration and just get the Wi-Fi 6 router. This will get the job done. The one I used will be linked in the description below. Now that you have your headset connected to your PC via 5 gigahertz connection, you're ready to play some games. But before you do this, there are some settings you might want to check in Virtual Desktop to ensure you get the best experience. First, environment quality and dynamic lighting are unimportant to gaming. And they will only matter if you're using the application to do work on your computer or to watch movies in VR. I also don't use any of the advanced features with my current setup. Under audio, make sure you have microphone pass-through enabled. A lot of people get frustrated trying to figure out why other people can't hear them online and this is why most of the time. So just make sure it's checked and you'll be good to go. Your microphone should work. Also make sure that sliced encoding is selected. 
This will reduce lag, like it says, but it won't work with all GPUs. I have an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 and it seems to help reduce lag for me. Video frame rate and video bit rate are the most important settings for ensuring that you get good visuals with the least amount of lag. Higher frame rate will make your game appear smoother when moving, and higher bit rate will make the game look sharper. I use medium for both of the settings, but you might want to play around with how they affect your latency. Latency is what we refer to as lag, and is measured in milliseconds. You can see how much lag you are getting by opening the streamer app on your PC. Latency under 50 milliseconds will work for gaming. You will probably not get latency under about 20 to 30 milliseconds when you're playing VR games. With my current setup, I'm able to get about 30 milliseconds of latency, and sometimes even less than that. The amount of latency that you will get will depend on the router you're using, the connection you get to the router, and the settings you use. Specifically for the settings, I found that each increase in the bitrate level increased my lag up by about 10 to 20 milliseconds, but it didn't change the visual quality all that much for me. And so that's why I decided to stay with the medium bitrate because it still looked really good and I was getting a very minimal amount of latency. Experiment with it for yourself and see what you like. The latency I get at about 30 milliseconds doesn't actually affect the gameplay. I only notice it when I'm looking really hard for it and moving my hands super fast. Some people don't recommend rhythm games like Beat Saber because of the latency, but I don't honestly don't notice the lag at all when I'm playing my games. I couldn't test it on Beat Saber specifically because I already own it on the Quest and don't want to buy the PC VR version. Besides, I think Beat Saber is better on the Quest anyways, since that means you can take it to your friend's house. It's portable, ready to go. Once you have your settings figured out, connect to your PC by selecting computers on the left of your visual desktop menu, and then select your PC. If you don't see your PC, it might be because you aren't connected to the right Wi-Fi network. Once connected to the PC, you should see your computer screen in front of you. Open Steam VR by pressing the left menu button and clicking Launch Steam VR. From there, you should see all of your games that you have downloaded. Launch a game and have someone else look at what kind of latency you're getting, and then change your visual desktop settings until you're satisfied. If you don't have somebody else to check your latency for you, I did it by just taking my headset on and off really quick, checking my computer, going back to the game, moving around, looking at my computer, and that's how I was able to see about what kind of latency I was getting. It's gonna bounce around, but it should find an average somewhere. And that's it, enjoy gaming. Let me know if you have any questions or need some clarification on the setup process. Check the description for links. And if this video helped you, help me by giving a thumbs up and subscribing for more VR related content. Thanks.